All right, guys, so this week we're just chilling. I'm just gonna be drinking this wine and that's what I'm doing because that's what I wanna do. Today I have one of my favorite wines here, something I drink all the time, just because it's really easy drinking. This is definitely something I'll be popping open just to watch some Netflix or something. We have our 2016 Riesling Cabernet coming from Kartauselhof, specifically from the Kartauselhof Berg Vineyard. Kartauselhof is a vineyard based in the Mosul in Germany, but this is specifically from the Ruer tributary valley. Originally the Mosul Valley was named the Mosul Sar Ruer. Until 2006, it just got condensed down to the Mosul, which doesn't give importance to the Ruer. This is just off to the side, and the sites are slightly cooler than the Mosul Valley, so the city's slightly higher and the wines are a little bit more delicate. Kardalzohof is a really cool estate where it was founded actually in the early 1300s by Carthusian monks. This is actually the eighth oldest continually making wine estate in the world. It's been owned from the same family since the early 1800s though. This is a cabinet, so which means it's gonna be slightly off dry. This is a Pradekatz vine. In the Pradekatz system, it starts from cabinet to Spätlese to Auslese to Birnauslese to Trockenbirnauslese, which means it's later and later harvest times. You're getting sweeter and sweeter wines. And this one is at the very bottom, so it is gonna be off dry. This is only eight and a half percent though, which means there's still some residual sugars to it, right? But in the cabinet itself, for different estates, they might make it in different styles. You could get a cabinet that's like 11 and a half to 12% alcohol, and that will be slightly drier, maybe just a touch of residual sugar. This is only eight and a half percent alcohol, so there's gonna be a good amount of sweetness to this, right? Let's talk about Riesling for a second. Riesling is a grape that's fairly misunderstood just because after World War II, there was a lot of cheap German wines coming out there. A lot of people thought it was mostly Riesling, when it was really mostly Müller Turgau, and again, these really low quality wines that are just super sweet and not complex at all. Riesling to me is one of the most complex and versatile grapes out there. There's so many flavors that you can get from Riesling. Obviously, we're looking for a lot of that citrus and stone fruit, so we're talking about apricot, but Riesling itself also has this really interesting minerality to it, right? It really expresses these like stony, slaty flavors. And you're getting this like slight, almost rubbery kind of like kerosene-y kind of like plasticky smell to it. Some people don't like that. I personally really like it. You're getting it a lot with older Rieslings. But in my opinion, Riesling pairs well with so many foods because of its high acidity and because of its varying levels of sweetness that come with it, right? If you eat a lot of spicy foods, Riesling is gonna be your friend. That sweetness really pairs well to contrast with that spiciness. Let's get this wine open and then we can see how it is. Let's taste this wine. It's beautiful, light straw, slightly golden. There's some green tinges as well, like some slight silver as well. It's still a fairly young wine. There's actually still a little bit of CO2 left in it, just from the bottling process. So the first thing I'm getting is all this like fresh white peach, some of this lime and lemon, a lot of these like slight like grapefruit aromas too. It's super fresh. There's definitely all this zestiness to it. And then I'm also getting all this like slaty kind of stony minerality. And there's definitely that like slight plastic, almost rubbery smell to it as well. I'm getting definitely most of that white peach up front. Let's taste it. It's so good. You're getting so much more of that white peach and that lemon and lime on the palate. It's almost like, like a, 
peach lemony kind of thing happening to it. On the palate, you're actually getting all that stoniness as well. It's very light in body, the acid is searingly high, but there's a good amount of sweetness to this, right? That high acidity and the sweetness balance each other out really well because if you're only getting that really high acidity, you won't be able to drink this. It would be like almost painful to drink, almost like having just straight lemon juice, but the sugar in it really balances it. This is a wine that I can drink the whole bottle of. I mean, it's only eight and a half percent alcohol and it's so easy drinking. Right now, it's not a super complex wine, but because of the acidity and the sugar in this, this wine can actually age for so long. German Rieslings, there are like 100 year old German Rieslings that you could basically still drink. And it's really hard to even blind taste a German Riesling just because of how timeless they can be. Like I've blind tasted like 15, 20 year old Rieslings and they still taste like super fresh and young. Yeah, I'm gonna drink this whole bottle. We're gonna be right back where I get to my second glass and we'll talk more about it then. So what's actually came out more in this now is actually that stony, slaty minerality to it. I hate the word minerality because technically the grapes don't pick up the minerals from the soils and it's such a vague thing, but it's got this like slightly iodine-y, kind of like smoky kind of smell to it. Um, I actually would have expected it to have more fruit aromas, like more of that peach and stuff to come out, but I'm actually getting more of that slatiness to it, right? So this wine is grown in slate, but technically grapes don't like eat the slate and put it in the grapes. And there's like no science behind that, but I, de I definitely drink the Kool-Aid and like, you can definitely taste where it's from, right? So what I would commonly pair with the Riesling is I really like curry with Riesling. Uh, I like a lot of fried foods with Riesling. Riesling is definitely a wine I bring to a lot of Chinese dinners with my family because half my family doesn't really drink wine and a like refreshing, semi-sweet wine that has all these citrus and fruit aromas is really approachable for people that don't drink a lot of wine. But yeah, this, this wine is super low alcohol, so drinking a lot of it really fast is pretty easy. All right, I guess we'll be back with class three. I'm gonna neck it. All right, so here's another reason why I really like German Riesling. You can get a really good quality wine for like under $30. This bottle I got for like 28 bucks and Kartalza Hofburg is like a Grosslager site, which is equivalent to like a Grand Cru site in like Burgundy, right? It's like one of those defined vineyards by the organization that it's like one of the best sites for growing Riesling grapes. Another great thing is it's so easy to get into when you're like, I don't know, a college student getting into wine because you know, you feel like drinking Bud Light and um, White Claws isn't, cool enough anymore and you're trying to grow up. Um, German Riesling is really easy to get into because it's slightly sweet, still tastes like citrus, it's refreshing. And yeah, like this pairs really well with fast food. There's like photos on my Instagram where I'm still in college and I'm drinking Riesling and I have like two sausage egg McMuffins. Obviously I was 21, you know, don't, don't underuse drink. Wine is so cool, man. I feel like I'm in Germany right now, you know? You're drinking this wine, you feel like you're by the river. It's kind of sunny, but it's cold up there, right? You're getting these fresh fruit aromas, but it's super acidic. Did I say there's no oak in this wine? There's no oak in this wine. Usually aged in like stainless steel are like these large like foudras, which are like these giant like oak barrels, but They've been used so many times, it's, you're not really touching the wood anymore because there's this like tartrate crystal surrounding the barrels. So it's not touching the oak, you're not getting oak flavors. Pour into the glass. The 
Does this smell like a fresh can of tennis balls or garden hose? Or does it smell like 1999 Thai Beanie Baby sitting in my basement, mint condition, tags on in a glass case? I never say any of those things, but it definitely smells kind of like plastic or kerosene or like rubber, rubber tire. That's what I would usually say. So the chemical compound is called TDN, which is a trimethyl dihydronephaline, you know? <laughs> But yeah, that's what gives Riesling that like rubbery smell. It's actually present in some Germanic, other Germanic grapes as well, but that's what that is. I think it smells delicious. Like I really like the smell. Like there's those weird people that think like gas stations smell really good. Um, I'm not one of those people, but this smells really good to me, right? I don't know why, but this wine, the more it's been opened, the less of the, the peach I'm getting now, actually. Even though when I first opened it, that's all I got. Right now, I'm getting a lot more of that citrus, a lot more of that lemon, lime, slight grapefruit, and um, more of that like rubbery, slaty smell to it. The more I drink this wine, the more hungry I am also. Like that acidity is like, really appetizing. Like I really want some fried food right now, like some tacos also, or like General Tso's chicken. That's what I'm craving. But yeah, still delicious. That's the end of this bottle. Um, we're gonna do this like maybe once a month where I just neck a whole bottle because I can't do this all the time. But I'm gonna order some Uber Eats because uh, I'm getting kind of hungry from this. And I might open something else. I don't know. Maybe. Probably should it. But yeah. Go find yourself some German Rieslings. Go drink some German Rieslings. They're super good. And I'll catch you next time. Uh, um, like the video if you like to see me getting drunk on camera. I'm not really drunk. Just a little drunk. And subscribe because please. Please subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll catch you next week. Maybe I'll be cooking. Maybe I'll be drinking. Maybe a little bit of both. But yeah, peace.